In this video, we're going to look at an application of vectors. Suppose the water in a river moves southwest at 4 miles per hour and a motorboat travels due east at 15 miles per hour relative to the shore. Determine the speed of the boat and its heading relative to the moving water. So part of the tricky part of this problem is the wording, relative to the shore and relative to the moving water, and what does all that mean? So what this means, an important part here, is this relative to the shore business. So when it says the motorboat travels due east at 15 miles per hour relative to the shore, so that would be like if you were standing on the shore and you were watching this boat go by, it would look like it's moving due east at 15 miles per hour. That's how the boat is traveling. Okay, so let's let's write that as a vector. So to write that as a vector, I'm going to think of this as north, south, for those of you guys that maybe north, south, um, east, and west. I think of this as the origin. And so if I'm moving due east at 15 miles per hour, east is the direction of my vector, and 15 is the magnitude of my vector. So I could think of this as going out 15 units this way, and I'm going to place my vector in standard position because that seems to be... I want to write it right on top of that x-axis, so let me just make my pen a little bit thicker, and then it'll be able to, so you can see it. Okay, so there's my boat. So that is the actual path of my boat. Now, the water in the river is moving southwest at 4 miles per hour. So let's draw that vector. So if I'm here and I'm going southwest, when we say southwest, if there's no angle given, then it means directly between south and west, so a 45 degree angle. Now, I'm not going to draw this perfectly, but this is supposed to be a length of 15, so I kind of want to make it look sort of to scale, and I'm going to draw this as a length of 4. Okay, so that magnitude is 4 right there. That's not a coordinate, like this is 15. This also has a magnitude of 15 because it's heading due east. But I don't know what the actual components of this vector are, and I'm going to want to figure that out. I'm going to want to figure out what are the components of this vector. The components of my boat vector are pretty straightforward because it's heading due east. The components would be 15, 0. Now, Oops, 15, there we go. So let's get back to this relative to the shore, relative to the water business. So when this is saying the motorboat's traveling due east relative to the shore, that's the result of the boat being affected by the water. So the actual path of the boat would have to have been a little bit more north because the, the um, current, it doesn't say current in here, but it's a river and it's moving, so I'll call it a current, is pushing the boat this way. So I'm going to take this vector right here, this 4 vector with a magnitude 4, my river vector, and I'm going to move it. Remember, you could take a vector and move it as long as it's parallel and the same magnitude, same direction. I'm going to try to do this. So I'm going to move it here. Okay, I'm just translating this vector up to here. So what we, and with a magnitude of 4, what we want to find out is the speed of the boat relative to the moving water. So in other words, how is the boat directed in the water? So that would have to be this way right here. This would be how the boat would have to be directed so that when it's affected by the current, its actual path is this purple one right here. Okay, let's, call, let's name this, oh, I don't know, let's name this vector B. Okay, and let's name this blue one vector, I'm going to take this east out of here, it's kind of in my way. I'm going to name this blue one my water, so I'm going to name this vector W. And then the actual path of the boat is the purple one, I'm going to name that vector A. Okay, so vector B, which is where the boat would have to be steered and the power that you would have to give the boat plus vector W, which is how the water is affecting the boat, is going to result in the actual path of the boat, which is given by vector A. Okay, that's a little bit tricky. Most problems they'll tell you vector B and vector W and then you have to find vector A. All right, this one, the wording was a little bit different. 
So we know with vectors, we can just add these components together. All right, the components of B plus the components of W will give the components of A. But here I'm trying to find vector B. So vector B, little algebra here, is going to be vector A minus vector W. Well, I know the components of vector A. That's 15, 0. But I have to find the components of vector w, which I don't know. So I'm going to go down here. Actually, let's draw, let's go to a clean sheet of paper and just focus on vector w for a second. Excuse the lines. All right, so I'm going to make this a little bigger so we can see it. So here was our vector w. We know it had a length of 4, but what we want to find now are the components of this vector. So basically, the x and y coordinates. Well, since this was exactly southwest, we know this is a 45 degree angle. So we're trying to find the two sides of this triangle here. We could use right triangle trigonometry. Some of you might know a 45, 45, 90 triangle. You can use that. Um, we know that these two distances are equal to each other. So I really don't want to call them x and y even though they are the xy components, they're equal to each other because it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. But maybe I'll just do them x and y in case you don't have a 45, then you would know how to do this. Or just, just write triangle trigonometry. So I would say that the uh, cosine of 45 is x over 4, and the sine of 45 is y over 4. And in this case, the sine and the cosine of 45 are both square root 2 over 2, so we're going to get the same answers. But if you had a different angle, then of course you'd get different components. So if I multiply both sides by 4, I'm going to get 2 root 2 equals x. Now, since this is in the third quadrant, it's going to be negative 2 root 2, and the y value is also going to be negative 2 root 2 which indicates the direction, the southwesterly direction. All right, so let's go back to our other picture up here and put this information in. So we've got the components of W now, which are negative square root 2, 2 square root 2, negative 2 square root 2. And we can put that over here. Let's see if I can, I might need to give myself a little room. Okay, so we have negative... 2 root 2, negative 2 root 2. So now, since we have the components of A and W, we can find the components of B. So that's going to be 15 minus a negative. So that's going to be 15 plus 2 root 2. I'll just leave it like that for now. Comma, uh, 2 root 2. All right, great. So now we have the components. But that's not what it was asking for, right? The question is asking for the speed of the boat. So the speed of the boat is the magnitude of our vector. So the speed of the boat is going to be the magnitude of vector b. That's going to be the speed of the boat. So we know how to find the magnitude of vector b, hopefully. The magnitude of vector b is going to be the square root of 15 plus 2 square root 2 squared plus 2 square root 2 squared. You know, it's basically looking at this right triangle and finding the length of the hypotenuse. So we'll let you plug that into your calculator. All right, looks like you should get approximately 18. So that's 18 miles per hour. Does that answer make sense? Well, the actual speed of the boat relative to the water, or relative to the shore, to a person standing on the shore, it looks like it's going 15 miles per hour. But relative to the water, the boat actually has to produce enough power to go 18 miles per hour in order to, counter, in order to counteract what the current is doing to it to get an actual speed of 15 miles per hour. Now, if the boat was you know, if the current was headed directly this way, then you could just subtract them, right? The boat would have to go 19 miles per hour minus 4 to get the 15. But because of the direction, it's not just an adding and subtracting kind of a thing. Okay, so now we got to get the heading, which means the direction. 
So that's our last thing we have to do here is the heading relative to the moving water. So we want the direction. In other words, we need to figure out um, this angle right here. We need to figure out this angle. Okay, so let's, we're going to need a little more room for this. All right, so let's just go to a new page here and just focus on vector B. We've already figured out the magnitude of this by using its components, and now we want to figure out its heading. In other words, its direction. So we need to figure out this angle. Now when we write the heading, we're going to use direction. This is east, and this is north. So the way we're going to say this is whatever this angle theta is right here, is we're going to say theta degrees north of east. Right? It's not heading directly east, it's heading a little bit north of east. How far north of east? It's not actually, it's, it would have to point that direction to be affected by the water and actually head due east, but this is the heading it would have to take in order to end up going due east with the current pushing against it. All right, so we got to figure out theta. Well, basic right triangle trigonometry, right? We have these components here, which are the sides of this right triangle. So this bottom side is 15 plus 2 root 2, and this side is 2 root 2. So we know that the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So we want to punch into our calculator the inverse tangent of all this business, and I'll let you guys do that and see what you get. Now this is a positive value, and the inverse tangent has a range. Inverse tangent is going to give you a range of something between pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, or 90 and negative 90. And that's what we want in this case. So, I mean, you'd have to be careful depending on what quadrant you were in to get the angle. Oops, that's not a 9. That's a 2. I think I'm projecting. This comes out to be about 9 degrees, right, when you punch this into your calculator. So if it came out negative 9, you know, maybe if the plane was heading this way, it would just be south of east. You just got to look at your picture and sort of figure out how to, how to use your angle to describe the direction. So in this case, it's headed 9 degrees north of east. And that would be the heading. So the, the boat would have to kind of, you know, head out, like turn the wheel headed nine degrees north of east so that when this current came along and pushed it this way that the boat would actually end up going directly east. Oops, I wanted a different color there. Let's try that one. Directly east and the result would be about would be 15 miles per hour instead of the 18 miles per hour. All right, well, I hope that helps a little application of adding vectors.